I think it's fair to say that video games have changed my life. Whether that be for better or worse is up for debate. Although specific games throughout my life, I feel like has made a huge impact in some way more than others. Some examples include Donkey Kong Country, a game which visuals and music still holds up today. This game has blown my mind ever since I first played it at about four or five years old. It showed me pure challenge in how to overcome the obstacles the game likes to throw at you by learning and improving after every life lost. And after death, after death, and after death, I ended up finally defeating King K rule and my kid self had accomplished something which I thought was impossible. Watching the credits to the game had filled myself with so much joy so the credits music of the game has left a huge impact on me and still gets me emotional to this day. Another example is the original Resident Evil. While this game has definitely shown its age, this was the first horror experience of my life. The game traumatized me as a kid to the point where I thought the PlayStation was haunted but regardless I couldn't ask for a better introduction to horror. Not just horror games but horror movies, horror anything. As if I never played that as a kid, I wouldn't like a lot of the things I like today, including another Another game that has left a huge impact on me, Silent Hill 2. This game showed me that storytelling doesn't have to be in your face and told to you all the time, however shown to you through means of symbolism, and how video game characters don't just have to be good or bad, but flawed, and it's how they come to terms with their flaws that shapes their character, and the game as a whole changed me. But there is another game that has recently released that has left a huge impact on my life, and this impact is arguably bigger than all the others, because this game showed me how I shouldn't waste my money ever again. All right, guys, listen up. I spent 21 Australian dollars on this game. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Shit Talk, where we talk about shit that I actually spent money on. Now, I was planning to cover this game when the meme was hot and popular, but to be fair, it was in early access. So I decided to wait until the day that the raid of Area 51 was supposedly going to happen, September 20th. If you don't know what this meme the game is based off, well, first of all, you're obviously living under Ayers Rock. Basically, as a joke, some bloke decided to make a public Facebook event called Storm Area 51. They can't stop all of us. Now, this was clearly made as a joke, as in the details of the event is inscribed, if we Naruto run, we can move faster than their bullets. Though over a million people decided to say that they were going, and the meme went a bit too far. And why do I say the meme went too far? Surely people aren't actually gonna go through with this, I mean, who in their right mind would? I'll tell you exactly who would do it. Two YouTubers who thought it was a good idea to storm Area 51 a few days a bit too early, and got fucking arrested. This is the age we live in, folks. The level of stupidity is almost as high as my urge to headbutt a wall right now. Now, out of all the games that exist, some while they definitely shouldn't exist, I kind of see why they're doing away. But a meme about storming a highly classified US Air Force base because of decade-long conspiracy theories that the government are hiding something to do with aliens there turned into a game that you have to pay for? When some people say anything's possible, I didn't believe them until I realized that this is actually a thing. Not just that, but this game was made by Keemstar of all people. <laughs> Yeah, that guy. Now I know he probably didn't make the game, but he was definitely behind it, promoting it, and banking off of it. Now while I'm a frequent watcher of Drama Alert, at least those videos serve a purpose and somewhat entertaining, unlike whatever this is. Okay, I think I've rambled on enough. It's time we actually get into this masterpiece of a game. As soon as you even open the bloody program, any high hopes you had for the game just drops to the depths of the Mariana Trench. Because just watch. Yep, a Unity boot screen. I can't say much about the Unity engine because it is an engine which a lot of individual or indie game developers like to use, but it brings up bad memories of Slender the Eight Pages and <laughs> Garfield Cut. Seriously? The song used in the main menu of the game is that royalty-free song used in the drama alert videos. There's not much hope for humanity, is there? What is this menu anyway? What the hell am I supposed to click on? Who is this? Is it Keemstar? I don't know. I'm just going to click on number one. It's September 20th, 2019. Today's the day to storm Area 51. Get in there and save all 20 aliens. What am I doing with my life? I spent $21 on this game! Never before have I seen such uninspired, lazy, and just downright terrible game design. Even for an indie game, this game lacks any quality whatsoever. The aim of the game is, of course, to enter Area 51 with, of course, no guards trying to stop you until you're in there. But, of course, the gate is wide open with no guards protecting it. You know, fairly standard for the most classified Air Force base on Earth. Your objective is to find aliens and bring them to a UFO. Yeah, that's it. What else were you expecting?
I spent $21 on this. First off, the movement is the jerkiest movement in any game I've ever played. The mouse is inverted with barely any control of what you can look at, and half the areas which definitely seems as if you could walk through, you definitely can't walk through. Secondly, who hired these guards? Look at this. You're supposed to be protecting this classified government location, yet you fail to see a 5 foot 8 man walk right past you. And you can see where the guards will be able to spot you, so if you're trying to not get spotted by them, you won't. The only way you'll get spotted by them is if you run into them willy nilly. So yeah, this is a stealth game, sort of. The original Metal Gear Solid has better AI for a stealth game, and that came out 21 years ago. Oh, that's funny, because I spent $21 on this. Thirdly, this game is stuck in windowed mode, no matter if I choose not to have it in windowed mode. So what the hell was the option for then? Fourthly, the game runs like a wet poo sliding down drywall. Fifthly, armored guards wearing Kevlar and bulletproof helmets die after a kick. And that would be fine if we're done by yes. Captain Falcon or Randy Orton. Oh, no. But it's by Keemstar, and all I know about Keemstar is that he's fast as fuck. I'm fast as fuck, boy. And finally, I spent $21. Now I tried to kick this guard to death, but since this game controls as well as a unicycle would control towing a cargo bob, I ended up dying. I'm actually in shock. Like, what do I even say about this? This was the first level out of five. Like, what has my life come to? I'd rather storm the military base in GTA 5 than play this. I'd rather play that little Britain game than play this. Hell, I'd much rather King K. Rule shove his pointy crown up my ass than I'll play this. Well, I guess we should start mission two, shall we? Great job. You saved all the aliens. I saved all the aliens, did I? I'm pretty sure I got 12. You saved all the aliens. All right, Keem, if you say so. Mission two is exact same as mission one, but this time, you're inside. Yeah, there's legit nothing else to say. A blatant copy of something that was already awful to begin with. Like vomiting into a photocopier, photocopying it, leaving a mess for whoever uses it next, and a picture to go with it. Mission 3 is slightly different. You have to get bombs and plant the charges on tanks, aircrafts, and other military property. This mission I enjoyed the most because you realize that the military vehicles are clearly made out of cardboard, as when you walk into them, they go flying into oblivion. It's nice to see where the taxpayer's money is going, but in this mission, you can actually turn into a gnome to be undetectable by guards. <laughs> Watch out, Agent 47 and Solid Snake. We got a new stealth king. <laughs> Then as I finished the level, I was greeted with the message that I have rescued all one aliens. Wow, all one of them. That's a lot of aliens, dude. Mission 4 is very different because you have to blow up everything. Way to deafen the player, good god. I didn't distort that either or make it louder. That came from the game itself. Game developers, listen up. There's a thing called volume adjustment, you know, where you can turn it down and higher, yeah? Whoever made this game clearly didn't know what that was. That was almost as loud as a Jacksepticeye video. Almost. You know what's pleasant? Playing a game you already despise only to be e-fucked by it. I mean, this mission, you shoot shit and shit explodes. What else do you want me to say? We're nearly there, guys. Only one mission to go. Mission 5 is where you're now on an alien planet and have to save the humans and avoid the alien guards. The gameplay itself hasn't changed from the first mission, apart from the fact that it's even easier because there is much more space to run around, basically rendering it impossible to get seen by the aliens. So less challenge on something that was already ridiculously easy to begin with. Great. But as I was progressing through the mission, I saw this, and I refused to continue further. I spent $21 on this. So nevertheless though, Storm Area 51 makes the bad <laughs> list and gets a 0 out of 10. Yeah, I get it. It's an indie game, not a AAA release, but I'm being this harsh because there is honestly nothing good about this game. I've played many bad games throughout my life, but some I still enjoy even though they're bad. Like the original Tekken for an example. I love the game, but it's not very good. But here, I don't have anything positive to say. This was utter, overpriced, uninspired garbage. And if you're considering buying it, just don't. There is no reason to. And it sucks because I was planning to cover a lot of indie games on this show. Way to fucking start it off. Literally the whole game can be summed up by the top review on Steam. Horrible game. Good job came for getting my money. Not buying one more game supported by that gnome. Couldn't have said it any better myself. This game, Storm Area 51, has taught me a valuable lesson in life to not waste my money. And I'm going to pass it down to all of you. Don't waste your money, guys. Squeeze every penny because one day you're going to buy a game that's going to permanently scar you. That's it for today, guys. I'm going to try and get a refund off Steam, which, let's face it, it probably won't work. Please send me money so I can feed my kangaroo. And don't forget to... Subscribe to Keemstar. <laughs> <laughs>
that's about it. <laughs> but if you want to support this channel, do not forget to give this video a share, a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe with those notifications turned on. Thank you all so much once again, and I will talk to you before you know it. See you later.